So, hi and welcome to the first episode of What I'm Gro- Growing This Week. This will probably be mostly, like it says, like weekly. But if things are really slow, it probably be bi-weekly so I don't bore you guys with the same thing. So, let's start. Over this past week, well, actually like two weeks, two to three weeks, I've been sowing a bunch of seeds now that it's getting cooler. Um... I would like to grow seeds in summer so I can stay ahead of the game, especially of like cool weather plants and bulbs and such that take longer. But the greenhouse becomes a sauna, like everything cooks. So now that things are cooler, I start mass sowing a bunch of things. Uh, most of these seeds I've had already from last year. Either I want more of them or they didn't germinate because I was. I suffer from what they call heavy, ha- heavy handed watering. I water too much and the poor seeds they rot. So, trying to get that under control this year so I can have better success. So, what I'm going to do today is just show you guys what's germinating. And yeah, then we talk about them a little bit because I probably do videos about in these individual plants later on and I don't want to be too repetitive. So, let's start. I think I sowed this tray probably like a week or two ago. I'm already getting germination. So one of the first ones that are coming up is, you can see it, that very thin blade. That is Stipa caprolata um, bridal veil. It's a Stipa grass. It looks like Mexican feather grass, but this one, the plumes, the flowering heads are a little bit more wispy. Really pretty, easy to grow from seed, as most steepas are. We have another one coming up right here. You can see if you guys can see it. That little green butt, that's another grass. Calamagrostis brachyterica. I think it's Korean reed grass. Never amazing grass, semi evergreen, nice fall flowers, plumes. Right next to it is a scabiosa, atropurpurea. Atropurpurea black knight. If you guys like black flowers, grow this one. It's not real black. It's like a really dark velvety red, but pretty close and super easy to grow. And it will continue to flower throughout the cool seasons. Um, I grew a, a strain of these this year in one of the beds and it flowered in summer too. So pretty long flowering, probably all year, as long as it's not like heavy frost or too hot. But because they flower so much, they're short lived. So take cuttings if you see flowers, colors that you like in particular, or re-sow the seeds. Or net themselves sow too if you just want to net them go wild. The beauty of gardening is you get to pick what you want to do. So I think that's it for this tray. So down here we have Digitalis purpurea subspecies Herodii silver fox. It's a foxglove. Um, I believe it's related to the biennial form, but this one's perennial. And it has silver leaves, really pale flowers. If you don't like pale flowers, this isn't the plant for you. But pale flowers attract um, night pollinators like moths. So this one is going to be great to attract more biodiversity. Right here we have one seedling. I think there's a couple more coming up, but I can't tell. And this is Senina compacta. Really nice purple flowers that are shaped like semi ball, like an umbrella. It's going to look really pretty, and they're pretty drought tolerant. Right next to them, well, across, is Vibascum flamoides specca. And Vibascum, I was going, I'm still waiting for some seed to arrive so I could do a video highlight on Vibascum. But, real quick overview they're mostly annuals, some perennial members, and Honestly, the showstoppers, the leaves on them are, some of them are green and silver. They're big, drought tolerant, and when they flower, they send up these huge spikes of flower that last quite a long while. And it attracts pollinators like no tomorrow. The other plant that's really coming up is right there. And this is Achillea Potomaca, I think, double diamond? Let me double check. Yeah, double diamond. Most people are familiar with Achilles as Achillea miniforium, a lawn wheat that has been bred a lot because it comes in many colors, but this one is a different, different plant altogether. It has white flowers, double, so it won't attract too many pollinators. 
because double flowers, they have those extra petals because their sex, sexual organs have been modified for that. But the, I have tons of pollinator plants, so it's okay to have a double plant here and there. <laughs> and this one's going to look nice, a, a nice touch of white. Okay, so this tray right here I'm prepping. Nain, it's soaking some water so I could sow some seeds tomorrow, which I probably highlight next week if this germination. Down here, we have all these seeds right here are bulbs, so they're going to take a while to germinate. But right there, we have a rainy near lily, Zepranthus germurdii, a native to Texas and the Chihuahua Desert Garden, uh, Desert Garden, sorry, the Chihuahua Desert. It has much larger flowers than Zepranthus can candida and they're a lot thicker too the leaf is different too it's a uh, much um it has more girth to the actual leaves instead of being grass-like it looks more like an onion flowers in summer um from what i've seen at the lo local university it self sows a lot so this is going to be great for naturalizing and that's the only bulb coming up right now probably in a couple more weeks or a month or two the rest of them will start coming up. My dog is in here. Say hi, Doby. Doby. And then over here, I have a bunch of, this tray right here is all annuals and short-lived um, perennial biannuals. All these guys are good to sow right now because they could, they could tolerate uh, cold. And some of them will even bloom in the cold. So right here, this row, actually let's start right here. This guy, which Bernie popped up, is Lupanus texensis. If, if that's our state flower of Texas. It's a common myth that you cannot grow these. You can grow them as long as they were commercially bought. Do not go out there and collect from the wild. That's what's illegal. And it's super easy to grow. So in a bit, this guy will show off its true leaves and I probably go plant them and do a video on them all by themselves since they're our state flower. Right here we have Calendula officinalis, oopsie daisy. Calendula officinalis is really popular because it comes in a myriad of colors, mostly within the orange yellow spectrum. Um, they're long flowering, the, the flowers are edible, they attract pollinators, and you can make face cream off of them. So if, you're, if you have kids that are bored right now during quarantine, or you want to teach them life science skills, start with this one. It's super easy to grow from seed and won't disappoint. And you could plant it right now. Once it gets bigger, you could plant it and it will survive the winter and probably flower in winter. Over here, we have some more calendula. They're barely coming up. And this one's a different variety called Zero Lights. It's orangey versus the one I talked about before. Oopsie Daisy is more yellow to white. And as I said before, super easy plant. Right next to it is probably a plant I've been wanting to grow for a while. Super common in the trait, but I never had the chance. It's called Centauria sinensis blue boy. It's native to Britain. It used to be a very common, um, the species used to be very common in the fields. It was considered a wheat because it would grow in the cornfields and then it would be in the harvest for the hay. And it suffered because of that because of new management skills and herbicides and all that stuff and it's declined a lot. Um, if typically flowers in spring, if you live in an area like me where winter could be kind of finicky and not that bad, you could get some flower. And fall and winter, really good for attracting um, pollinators and they need it, especially during those dark um, gloomy times, the few that are active. And also, it's a splotch of color. It's a really nice blue. And I believe this is a taller variety. They have short varieties that are really small. And I call them dumpy. I don't like those. I like them looking more natural. And then on the end, nothing has germinated yet. So we won't cover those just yet. Down here, we have a couple plants. If you look really closely. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Hmm. I'm on the wrong tra trail. So that little green thing is Tanakitum <coughs> periftum aureum. If any of you guys have grown caramel, ca caramel, not caramel, 
tansy. It's like a little white flower that you can use in your tea. This is one of those, but this one has um, golden leaves. And I'm going to be planting it in a shady spot so that gold stands out more. That's one thing that you could do to brighten up shady spots is plant plants that are yellow leaved or have variegation. Makes it really stand out. Right next to it, these couple of rows, there's a clump. This is Marthoria bicornis. I'm trying to remember the common name. I can't remember. It's another annual, self seeds. And this one, I'm not going to give away too much because I have a plan for it. And you guys see that in another video. Super easy to grow. Again, flowers in winter. Scent it too. And you know, scent in winter, because it's colder, that scent is coming out stronger and more, I guess, pure. And yeah, if you have a patio or a balcony, and you could plant these guys near your door and you won't regret it. It's a really sweet scent. And I'm looking at the every trays and I think that's about it over here down here i sowed some seeds these guys won't come up for a while because they were the last batch i sowed so probably by next week we could see what's happening there over here we have a bunch of long tap rooted plants and some native trees slash shrubs this one right here is mirabilis longifolia it's a species of four o'clock native to texas um super easy to grow has these really really long white flowers if you guys are neat here in texas or i think pretty much anywhere in the southwest we have these moths called hummingbird hawk moths they will lay their eggs on these and feed off of them so it's a really good plant to encourage caterpillars because after all you cannot have moths and butterflies if you don't have caterpillars so you need to feed them too and this plant yes a couple leaves and stems might be eaten but it recover it's worth it over here we have another four o'clock, the more common one, Jalapa Marble Mix. The flowers are splotched and um, red. So if you have a white white one, they would have red spec speckles and yellow and so on. Really interesting. And then right here, I think I saw some germination. Nope. Guess I was. Oh, actually, yeah. This one is another native, and it's called Lego. Decima texana, or the Texas skeleton plant. It grows and it's just a bunch of green stems with little pink like dandelion type flowers. It's really pretty. And it will probably look good with some grasses. And well, spoiler alert, that's what I'm going to do. Over here, we have nothing yet. Back there, in, oh yeah. Back there, if you see that big leaf right there, that is Salvia penstemoides. It's a native salvia to Texas. I think it's only found in like three counties. Um, I collected it from the local university. Again, don't be collecting out in the wild. And it's a really pretty salvia and I probably do a highlight video on it because yeah. This right here is actually a small tree. It, it's not a small tree. <laughs> it's Calapa speciosa. It has big leaves. It's related to desert willows. It's part of the Biganonoisia family. Really nice. And I'm probably going to give that to my grandma. This right here is Sina. I'm not going to even try to pronounce the species name. There it is. If anyone's curious. I'm going to try. Wistnizini. <laughs> Yellow flowers. It's in the pea family. Super easy to grow. Makes a nice small woody bush. You could prune it, train it. And we probably do a video about that once it gets bigger. Back there we have um, Vertex, oh, I can't remember the other part, Angus Castus or the Vertex tree. It has leaves that kind of look like um, a certain illegal plant, it is not related. Um, really easy plant. Purple flowers, attracts pollinators, has a long blooming season during um, summer. And bumblebees, carpenter bees, and a lot of the larger native bees really like it. And I, I think, oh no, I got some, oh sorry, I stepped on my dog. And then we have one more thing, we have this plant. I have no idea what it is, it's not what I sowed in there, so we'll keep an eye on that one. So this is the first episode of um, where I'm growing this week. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and see you guys next week. <laughs>